Today we're in the second part of our study in the book of Acts, and this uh, video is for session number four, which covers uh, Acts chapter 15. Um, the points connect to 15, 7 through 9, and then 22 through 31. There were a lot of Gentiles coming to know Christ as Savior, and uh, then there were opinions surrounding that. There were, there were people in this uh, early church um, that were connected to it, that were um, giving instruction to these Gentiles that were coming to Christ. And uh, some of the instruction was that they had to um, keep the law. Um, as part of maintaining their own salvation. And that actually um, became a real question for that early church, and that is um, what part of the law is necessary for these Gentiles to keep, especially as it got connected to um, their own salvation and what they were supposed to be doing. And so uh, there was a big uh, kind of meeting with a bunch of church leaders, uh, including Peter, Paul, Barnabas, James, who was a pro of prominence in that church at Jerusalem, they all got together, and they began began to uh, dialogue about what what was to be done, what was to be said, and really, kind of what was at stake in some ways was, um, uh, as Gentiles ourselves, um, what's what's the right thing to tell us? What's the right kind of connection to the law? To keeping the law, specifically the ceremonial law, it's pretty obvious that we were supposed to, that God is not all of a sudden okay with murder and uh, and sexual uh, sins of all kinds and coveting and all those moral things. Um, the question really was around the ceremonial. And so um, in today's lesson, there are three important le uh, lessons in today's, in today's uh, Sunday school um, teaching. There are three important lessons for us to answer that question: Who is the gospel for? Who who is this gospel for? Who uh, um, and we see that um, in verses seven through nine of chapter fifteen, where it says, "And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now he could have been referring to, and we know that he this for sure is applicable to the connection with Cornelius, that Roman, uh, Roman centurion who um, was a God fearer who God brought um, Peter to and. As Peter gave the gospel to him and his household, they believed as they believed the Holy Spirit fell and and dwelt them and they began to have the same sign gifts, the same manifestations of the Holy Spirit in those sign gifts that um, that the Jews had. And so that's what he means when he says in verse 8, And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Um, so we see Peter make this witness. He kind of says, I saw what God did. I saw what the Holy Spirit did. Um, he, The Holy Spirit understood that they believed in their hearts, and as they believed in their hearts, they were filled with that Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It happens one time in salvation. They were filled with it. Um, being controlled by it and began to manifest uh, the same acts of the Holy Spirit of God, supernatural acts in that moment, as a sign to those Jews, to Peter and the people that were with him, of um, the fact that the Holy Spirit really did um, save them. And that even though they were Gentiles, they were saved the exact same way. They didn't have to do a bunch of the law. They didn't have to do a bunch of, um, of the ceremonial things. They just... They just did it, and so um, they they just believed and and were filled, were indwelt. Um, so pretty amazing thing. Uh, filling and indwelling are not exactly the same thing. You have to be indwelled to be filled, um, but you can be indwelt and not filled because filled just means controlled by the Holy Spirit. They were in that moment, and so basically. Um, what Peter's saying here and what gives us an understanding 
is that all who have faith in the gospel, um, all who believe the gospel, Jew and Gentile, um, are the ones who are saved. And so who's the gospel for? It's for everybody who believes. It's for everybody, but it is effective for all who believe. Lesson number two then leads to th this lesson is all are saved by faith in the gospel apart from the law. If you get under verse 22, after he um, testified and others, it says, Then pleased it the apostles and elders and the whole, with the whole church to send chosen men of their company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. So now um, Paul and Barnabas are accompanied by people from Jerusalem to go to, um, to, go to these Gentiles. Um, to confirm their decision. It says, verse 23, and they wrote letters by them after this manner. So they wrote letters to hand out to these um, Gentiles in these churches where Paul and Barnabas were taking them. And this is what the kind of thing that it said in the letter. Remember, they don't have copiers. So they, they're, they're giving you a general sense of what the content of the letter was for each one. It says, the apostles and elders and brethren and send greeting unto the brethren which are the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, Cilicia sorry, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So he's saying we know that there be people that are saying that they're speaking on our behalf. They say that, yeah, you are saved, but you got to start doing these ceremonial laws. There's a surgery you need to take. There's a surgery you need to have. Um, it's not just enough to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in Jesus and you have to do these other parts of the ceremonial law, having this, getting circumcised, all the things that the proselyte, proselyted uh, Jews would have done before when someone became a Jew, you know, um, before Jesus came. That's what they had to do. Um, it says we didn't give that commandment. That wasn't from us. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we wanted you to get this letter and we wanted you to get this letter to hear from them because these are people who love Jesus, who have, who have put their, lives at risk for getting Jesus to people like you. Uh, verse 27, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. He says, this is what you, this is what you need to care about. Um, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication for which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. From which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. Fare ye well. So basically they begin to answer, what? how should you behave then, right? Um, how should, what What should this happen? What, what part should you have to keep? And they basically said, um, abstain from meat offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, from fornication. And if you do that, you'll do well. Goodbye. <laughs> that leads us to lesson three, which is all are called. So, so what do we learn in lesson two? That their salvation wasn't on them doing the ceremonial, this keeping of the ceremonial law, the dietary laws, those kinds of things. That wasn't a part of their salvation. They they were fine with that. Really, what it came down to is lesson three, which is in twenty nine verses through verses 31, that all are called, both Jew and Gentile, to pursue behaviors that preserve God, gospel unity. Um, verse 29, again, that you have saved from meat offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well, fare ye well. So the idea with that is that, you know, these are things that are going to cause disunity between other Jews and you. Um, and also like the fornication part, obviously is the things that would have been, the Jews would have been shocked by, but Gentiles was a very part, much part of their culture. And so they're, 
I think what they're giving is here not a theological, this is what you have to do to be saved. I think what they're giving is this is what need, you, this is the behavior you need to think about to create unity um, with Jews and Gentiles alike. And this is what's better for you anyway. Um, so that's what they're giving them. And when they that was so much less of a burden. And that's the point. There's so much less of a burden on these Gentiles than than all of the other things that these Judaizers, these people that were Jesus plus the law were trying to put on them. And that led to them having this reaction, verse 30. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, this letter that we just read, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. The Gentiles were thrilled because they were no longer going to have to be burdened um, with um, themselves having to keep the law, but also in their evangelistic efforts, trying to get pagan, formerly pagan people who believed in Jesus, who were exhibiting the the gifts of the Spirit as they were saved, to not have to include all of that other stuff um, into their discipleship. That was a huge, huge deal. Um, so they, it seems like they were agree in agreement that, yeah, we need to do things that keep unity in the body. Um, but there was a consolation. There was a comfort in the fact that they didn't have to do all those extra um They didn't have to become Jewish to be saved. And uh, you see that all over Paul's writings. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for the power of God unto salvation to all believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. There's no difference between uh, Jew and Gentile. The same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon his name. And so um, the obvious application is do your people that you're going to talk to uh, in your class on Sunday, do they know Christ? Uh, through the gospel? Have they believed in the gospel? Are they laying some additional thing on people for salvation? And then are they doing things that that um, pursue unity between the brethren? Those are all obvious um, application points that you can use. Um, and if all of that's true, by the way, let's get the gospel to people. It's not a burden. It's a blessing. And not everybody will believe, but some will. And uh, no one will if there is no gospel proclamation. Hope that helps you as you think through the lesson. And I hope you have a great uh, week of study and a great uh, Sunday school time on Sunday.